So today we're going to start diving into how you can use the Unreal Engine alongside with music you've already created to generate random, unpredictable music that doesn't get old or doesn't get stale and can be triggered by gameplay events. What's cool about this is it unlocks this huge potential to be able to create music that doesn't get stale, music that is procedural, music that is generative, like an AI almost. So you can take what you've done and you can add some AI into it so you get this blend of you know specific arranging and specific stuff that you want plus a, a few layers of things that the computer is going to write for you as well. So it's really cool and uh, let's jump in and check that out. Okay, so in this particular uh, session, we're going to be talking about a few things. Uh, one, we're going to be diving into meta sounds and looking how you can use the sine wave oscillator to generate melodies. We're going to be talking about how you can use an array of notes so that you can kind of limit what the Unreal Engine chooses from. And then we're going to talk about weights and how you can weight that so you can get a specific feel. Maybe you want more ones and fours or twos and threes. Um, but you can kind of control the feel and give it parameters to work within. We're also going to be using a layer of pads that I created underneath that. And then we're going to use a trigger box to basically uh, bring in that random melody and take it back out so it's uh, very seamless. We're also going to be talking about BPMs and um, using those as repeat triggers and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this video. So let's get to work. Okay, so first let's just look at what we're doing here. So I'm going to hit play and what you hear is a an ambient pad that I've created. And then uh, what happens is when your player moves up onto this platform here, you're going to hear a melody come in that the Unreal Engine is going to write for us based on some parameters. And there it is. What an uplifting, positive vibe. So I've reached this plateau. I'm inside this trigger box. We have a melody that's being generated for us over top of what I've already created. And then we're going to jump off and we're going to, that melody is going to go away. Now we're back to just what I've created. And then when we go back up here, we're going to hear it again. But it's different every time. Now, the window of opportunity for it to generate is very small because I told it that I only wanted to hear a few notes of the scale that we're in. We're in C major right now. So... Let's get out of here and let's dive into the meta sound. First, let's look at the sound that I created. Um, open up the blueprint here. This is called uh, the Melody Array. So basically what I did is I created a new meta sound and I entitled it Metal Sound Source and then I called it M Meta Sound Melody Array. And so here's what I, what I did. Let's look inside here. Okay, so what we have happening, let's look at the first simple part. The first part is as soon as the gameplay is triggered, we are going to play this file that I created called pads. Um, I make a lot of pads, and if you are looking for ambient pads, you can check them out. Uh, I'll put the link in the description of the video. Um, here is uh, what that sounds like. just a nice ambient pad sound. Now I could have put drums and stuff in there and we'll do that in some future videos but I wanted to keep it simple today. So when you hit play, that's what you're hearing. That's all you're hearing. So this is kind of the ambient world layer that's playing over top of the player. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to use the Unreal Engine to play a random array of melody that uh, within a, a very small group of notes that uh, I wanted it to trigger. Um, we're in C major, so I wanted it to feel very positive, so we used C, F, G, E, and A. Now, let's see how we do that. So, we have the um, pad layer playing, so now what we want to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a sine wave oscillator that's going to generate a pitch for us. So we're going to come in here, we're going to go um, create a new meta sound. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to do this separately. I'm just call this sine wave sample. All right, so create this new sine wave. We're going to go add the sine player. OK. 
okay? Then we're gonna connect this to the output. Now, as soon as we hit play, you're just gonna hear an obnoxious A440. Wanna lower that octave, cut that in half, be A220. Okay, so now what we wanna do, that we have the sine wave, we wanna pull off this frequency and we wanna go MIDI to frequency. So now what this is gonna do is this is gonna tell the sine wave to play this MIDI note frequency. Um, 60 happens to be middle C. So when we play this, we're hearing a la la. And if we went up to a D, we could just go up to. And so this is telling us to take that sine wave and to play an actual note. <clears throat> Let's move this up here. So now, after we do that, we want to tell what MIDI note to play. So we're going to tell the Unreal Engine we want to get a random note from an array of notes that we're going to tell you. So we're going to go random array. So random array. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to build an array. And this is where the power comes in. This input in array I've got lined up over here. And what I've done is I've added seven elements. And if you look down here, you'll see I've got 60, which is middle C, 62, which is D, 64 is E, 65 is F, 67 is G, 69 is A, and 72 is the C an octave higher. So the only notes this is going to play when it triggers are a series of those notes. So the only all you have to do to do that, you come over here, you add the array, and you change this to a graph input and we are going to add the elements here and then you just put whatever notes you want. I want C, maybe you want C sharp, so you change it to 61. All right. So now that we've added the array in of the notes here, and you could change these notes to whatever you want. You could make that 61, that could be a C sharp instead. Um, and all you gotta do is go up one number for every half step. Now, we also want to, when we play this melody, we want to trigger a repeat. So what this is gonna do is this repeat node is gonna play, and every time it plays, it's gonna grab a random float from here, which is a series of notes. So it's gonna grab one of these notes and play it out of the sine wave. Now, we also wanna control the tempo at which it does that. So when we go back and we're gonna build this out, we're gonna trigger this on a uh, trigger repeat. And we're going to change, we're going to pull out of this, this is the time period that it repeats. So if I do an on play here, every time I hit on play, yeah, that's kind of funky. What it's doing now, it's cycling through this array, which has a lot of empty notes. Let's put another note in here. Let's put, uh, yeah, let's put a, let's put a, D in there. Yeah, that's kind of funky. I like that. Now what that's doing is that's triggering it at this, but what we want to do is we want to trigger it at a certain tempo. So we're going to pull this off. We're going to go BPM to seconds. Okay. Now it's going to do it at a tempo. That's 90. Let's take it up a notch. Let's go to 126. Um, and then uh, we're going to divide the whole note by four, and we're going to tell it every two quarter notes. Okay, and then we're going to go every one quarter note. Let's go on one quarter note. Play quarter notes here. Now it's pulling from some empty notes too. Let's add one more note in here. Let's go 65, which is an F. So now we're just generating this random array, which is very cool, but we want to control it a little bit more. So let's look back at our blueprint. Now what we're doing, so we've got the trigger coming in. Uh, when we trigger this input, uh, I've just created a new input here so that I can use that for game events. So when we trigger this 
when we trigger repeat here, it's going to repeat and it's going to pull from this array. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want a little bit more of the tonic than I want the third. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a weighted array. So what this is going to do, so in here in my array I have seven elements. So I'm going to weight them. So you just basically pull off this weight and then you create an input and then you add the same amount of array elements that your array has and then they will respectively weigh those elements. So for here index one is going to be weight. I just arbitrarily chose the number six. I, I just there's seven elements. I could have chose a seven. That would have probably been smarter. But I chose six. So this first array element, which is the C, the middle C, which is 60. If you look here, over here, that's 60. That first element of the array is going to be six times more likely to be played than any other note. And then I just went down. Uh, the D, I'll have that play one-sixth of the time. I'll have the E play one-sixth of the time. The F, I want to play half of the time. Um, the G, a little more than half. The A, I don't want that often, a twelfth of the time. And then the octave C, I want one-sixth of the time. And so basically what that's doing is that's allowing us to tell the Unreal Engine, hey, randomly pick these notes, but when you do it, center it around these pitches. So then that would uh, allow us to create a certain vibe. Maybe I had an F sharp in there and I only wanted to play that every now and then, or maybe I wanted to play it a lot so it had kind of a Lydian feel to it. You could do that and you could add the F sharp and you could weight that into the random array. Now, so that kind of finishes the random sine wave playing. Now, what the other thing we wanna do, so we've got the sine wave generating here, we've got the array of pitches, we've got the probability that we want those arrays to play, we've got the trigger repeat, triggering it at 120 beats per minute on the quarter note, and then we've got this input trigger that I've called play AI melody, and we'll, we'll use that in a minute uh, with the trigger box. Now, I also wanted to spice it up a little bit, so I added a, a delay effect, uh, and, and what I did here is I brought this audio out, I brought it into this delay. I set the dry level to 1 and the wet level to 0.3, feedback to 0.5, and then I also put this at 120 beats per minute, and as you can see here, I did it on eighth notes. So now, when you trigger the note, you actually, here let's play this real quick, when I trigger this. And then inside the world, I put a little reverb on it too to create it even more ambient. Now, the one other thing I did is I brought it into this mixer and then I created this melody volume envelope here. So what I want to happen here is when that melody comes in, I don't want it to just slam us in the face. I want it to slowly come up. So the way that happens is I set this ADSR envelope float. So basically what this is, this creates an envelope. So as soon as that melody is triggered, over this length of time, 25, I, I don't, I don't, that might be milliseconds, I don't, I don't know what kind of time frame they're using here, but over 25, this envelope is gonna go up and it's gonna stop and sustain at this gain level, 0.8. So that's going to slowly bring the melody in and keep it there. Now, when I stop the AI melody, which would be when you leave the trigger box, it's gonna trigger that release and it's going to slowly, over this time period, bring the gain back down to zero. So, that's how we control the volume coming in and coming out. So, let's look at that again over here in the blueprint. We've got our pads triggering. We're gonna walk up onto this mountaintop and be victorious so inspiring. You could also make this melody minor if you want it to be creepy and eerie um, or atonal even. Tr truly random atonal if you wanted it to be darker. Now I'm over here and I'm not as victorious. Here it comes. Back in. And then we'll jump off and the melody's gone. And that's how you co-write a song with the Unreal Engine. What's cool about this too, you can also take it further and you can um, 
make different trigger boxes to trigger different vibes, you could bring in other loops. And we'll talk about that in future videos. I did want to show you one more thing, how I implemented the trigger box. So over here, you'll see I put this trigger box here. And you just go over here to add trigger volume. And then in, and I made that a blueprint instance. And then so when you go into the blueprint and you right click, you can get a add function, add collision, on begin overlap. And what that does is that creates a reference to the trigger box. So when your actor goes inside that trigger box, we're going to trigger this audio component here. And the way we do that, and it took me a while to figure this out, but the way you do that is when you have the actor begin envelope and this is empty, you drag in the meta sound, uh, which is MS Melody Array. You drag that in, and that creates a reference to that sound. And then you pin that into that uh, execution pin, and then you make sure this value, you pull up this event trigger parameter, and then what this does is it tells this meta sound, which is our melody, tells this to trigger this input, play AI melody, which we put um, right over here, play AI melody. And then when you leave the trigger box, which is end overlap, it triggers this parameter, same target, Remember, you got to use the same target. If you duplicate this target, it won't communicate to it properly. So it goes to the same return value, and it tells it now, instead of play AI melody, stop AI melody. And then what that does is that allows you to trigger this, and that triggers the release. So that is a lot, and uh, it kind of is can be a little overwhelming, but uh, feel free to pause the video and look at the blueprint uh, as I had it. Uh, here is a, a full screen view of the third player map, and or the third person map, and then here is a full screen look at the entire Metasound blueprint. Um, and there's our one we were messing around with. We'll get rid of that, and that's it. So, Hope this video was helpful. Hope it inspires you to do all sorts of crazy things. I mean, the reality is AI is here, and uh, we can either run from it or use it as a tool. The cool thing about video games is you're rewriting the story every time you play, so being able to pull in a little bit of random elements on top of what you've already done musically is a really powerful feature. So I hope this video was helpful. We'll see you in the next video.